In 1925, in a small French village south of Paris, Pierre Beben was born. His village was firmly rooted in pious religious traditions, with particular focus on devotion to the Sacred Heart, which would influence the tidal wave experiences of his faith journey throughout his life. The impact of the Second World War upon his village raised Pierre's adolescent consciousness and service to the plight of those who suffered hunger and poverty. It was upon hearing the heroic missionary stories of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate community that he felt his call to religious life. At the age of 17, he escaped from the occupied zone of Germans to enter an Oblates of Mary Immaculate novitiate in southern France. His religious formation, theological studies, and youth ministry experiences cultivated his interest in the relationship of theology, psychology, and new methodologies for stimulating the religious imagination of young people. Contemplation, creativity, curiosity, conversations, and community have been factors which have flowed through every fiber of Father Beben's being. Over the years, Father Beben has designed a unique contribution to the catechetical and communication fields by weaving an intriguing tapestry of these experiences into a methodology called the symbolic way. In calling catechists to identify new catechetical methodologies, the National Directory for Catechesis states, From the beginning of time, God has adapted His message to earthly conditions so that we might be able to receive it. This implies for catechesis that never-ending task of finding a language capable of communicating the Word of God and the Creed of the Church, which is its development in the various circumstances of those who hear it. This program highlights the theory and practice of one approach known as a symbolic way. Over several summers, Father Beben taught at the University of Dayton. Here we present video segments from both his teaching and in-depth personal interview. Father Beben begins by explaining the work of the international center he created in Lyon, France, known as CRECAVEX, the International Center for Research and Formation in Religious Communication. He shares with us how the Tizé community in Tizé, France, is a perfect example of some of the elements present in the symbolic way that communicate depth and meaning to young people today. I finished my uh, study in Lyon, in university, in major seminary. I took a degree in psychology and pedagogy. That was very necessary for me. You know? It's always right and left hemisphere of the brain. When Mark Luan explained to me all these things, I, I recognized that. And you know, Corsica is right hemisphere. You have to grow in this way, in this symbolic way. It's absolutely necessary. But in the same time, you need sometimes a few years when you develop the left hemisphere of the brain, the rationality, the precise words, all these things, literacy. So at this time, I followed the way of a student, writing. But writing with a right hemisphere always there means always writing, bon, study, and so on, with creative way. Always passing from one side of the brain to another side of the brain. So I stay there a few years. I follow a, a course in Catholic University of Lyon in psychology and pedagogy that was very important with a master from Switzerland. At this time also I have had a great guru in catechetics that awakened me to catechetic all way. It was the famous uh, Joseph Colomb that was more or less condemned by Rome because he writes some progressive catechetics trying to connect psychology, pedagogy, and dogma. So I follow his course and so on. That, that was the, the way. And at this time also, I, I was with young people. A crisis of faith is sometimes the reality which presents a new lens or sets one in a new direction. But Ben speaks about the crisis he faced and how it became a turning point in his spiritual evolution. He discovered that he had to set himself and others free from the prison of pessimism and formalism, which is the result of a certain type of religious upbringing. You know, 
I personally, in my life, and mainly when I was younger, I was oppressed by literacy, by catechism, by all this school way, as the only way to be human. And uh, I didn't know, but at this time, I was oppressed. Literacy, instead to liberate me, oppressed me. Oppressed me because no imagination, no sensitivity. That was like a devil. So I react strongly on that. And uh, the, the, the orientation in uh, catechetics was to say we have to reintroduce now in communication of faith the great value of sensitivity. I link all these things with uh, a new way, called that audiovisual way, symbolic way, you know, it's another language in which we give more importance to the knowledge by feeling, by intuition. Intuition is first. By sharing together, instead to rationalize first. I'm not against rationalization, all these things that are developed in university. I think it's absolutely necessary. But what, what was crazy? How we put that out? How we decide that it's not intelligent? In my country, many young, they, they don't go mass to Sunday, less and less. Why? Because the symbolic way of mass say nothing to them. They are completely out. No meaning at all. Words, preaching, all this candle of the knowledge, you know, it's not their world. But if you go to ESA, I'm amazed, you know, all this. 20,000 boy and girl sitting down, you know, staying two, three hours. So the book that I write at this time was slowly to reintroduce these values and to make. So the last uh, chapter of some book was now we have to function in stereo, not in mono one not in only rational, but also in symbolic, also in uh, technology, and so, you know. Make a center when we balance both, and we give to the students well, technology, because technology is on the very precise, but also symbolic, and readjust symbol and technology, uh, literacy, and uh, symbol. It was during the 1960s that Baben first experienced the power of audiovisuals. His innate taste for music, images, and stories opened him to a new media approach. One question that continually preoccupies him is, what affinity does the audiovisual language have with the gospel? In the Labyrinth exhibit of Expo 67, he became conscious of the possibility of understanding things not through words, but through the effects produced in him by visual and audio stimuli. He realized that the audiovisual is another mode of communication, one that brings out in us quite different aspects of our understanding and personality. Audiovisual oriented people were being born and we could no longer speak to them as we had spoken in the past. The Church's catechetical and pastoral work had to change. He recognized three characteristics of modern life that we must keep in mind in our approach to younger generations. The resurgence of the imagination, the importance of affective relationships and values, and the dissolution of national and cultural frontiers. Father Baben's insights find a home today in the National Directory for Catechesis, where we read, Catechesis also must learn the culture created by the mass media. 
It is not enough to use the media simply to spread the Christian message and the Church's authentic teaching. It is also necessary to integrate that message into the new culture created by modern communications with new languages, new techniques, and a new psychology. I have a shock because during a, a meeting, a Protestant pastor, you know, it's, a, it's like that, like a vocation. It was four o'clock afternoon in the fields. He came to me and he said, Pierre, you help us a lot with what you wrote. But if today you want to speak to youth and masses, you have to change language. It was a shock. So because, you know, uh, at this time, the, the, the best idea that we have is to give a, a good lecture, small but strong, and help this lecture with a lot of, uh, you know, image, sound, and so on. He, he, he so uh, I try to use media, uh, image, and so on, to implement, to achieve the, the lecture of catechetics. But I have had a, a second shock, is with Marshall McLuhan, eh? the first magazine about electronic and computer wire. You know this magazine, American magazine? Yes, wired, yes. wired. The first uh, time it appears, it's a long page and quotation of Mark Lewin as the prophet of this new age. Eh? Audiovisual is electronic culture. It's a culture. Don't use media like a tool. Using media for spreading the Christian message, it's not enough. You know, using like a tool. It is also necessary to integrate the message into the new culture created by the modern ways of communication. You will see it's, it's an effort to integrate the message into the new culture, not used as tool, but really change the system. The structure of the church was conceived to give an experience, an alchemic, alchemic, mm -hmm. alchemy, alchemic mm -hmm. experience of transformation. You have to pass from the old way of being human to a new way. You have to pass from night to day. And the place of the sun shining through the glass window, all these things were calculated to give you an experience. They don't teach. They give you an experience. And many, many things you have to think. It's very concrete. For example, in St. James, oh, they will show you the famous place with incense. Why? Because when you arrive to see church with pilgrims walking all day, <laughs> smell a lot. It's terrible, you know? So they need to put incense to change the... the f it's very physical and, mat you know, that's symbolic. Passing from night to day. All these things. The first symbol is the place. The single symbol to me is the is the the voice, the the the, the, the music, the the sound, the sound. Bon, uh, you were in the, if you go to Tese, I think study the sound. It's in, incredible. You are you are not listening a sound coming like that. You are inside <coughs> the sound. Sound comes all around. You are, and personally, you are touched by a sound that is all around you. You are inside the sound. That's the same word and reverberation. I, I would put on as third symbol, light, not image, light. 
the kind of light. I said to you in the Middle Ages, clear, obscuro. Huh? Stained glass effect. Huh? I know some people that say, I like to go to this place because stained glass is so fantastic. I go at 10 o'clock morning because the sunshine just inside the stained glass and I don't look at the stained glass. I, I am in the reverberation on light on me and that heals me. All this global structure, huh? you know, not one but all, provoke a physical and psychological experience. This ground, this symbolic ground, provoke a physical and psychological experience on you, in you. You have a, a nervous vibration. You are touching your brain, and mainly in the right hemisphere of your brain, you are touched. So, this uh, experience, physical and psychological, change your behavior. That's why what you say, it's true. Huh? Change your behavior and make you reach a new level of life and <coughs> understanding. Life and understanding. Life means you could be healed, saved, huh? and also understanding. But your understanding is linked with you, it, with, with your experience. Your understanding is not an understanding of a dogma, of a doctrine external to you. It's because you have changed, you don't have the same idea. You know, that's the symbolic way. Literacy way is teaching, going to a uh, new uh, mind and new will. Huh? Here is experiencing, changing your behavior, and when you change your behavior, your mind change, and you reinterpret Bible in another way. Image is not a representation of. No. When we say image represents the face of God, Jesus Christ, all this story. That's a Gutenberg way of approaching image. That's a literacy way. What was the image before? Image is a magic, magic object that produces an effect on you. It produces what? An effect on you. You know, it's like, uh, oh, it's like water of Lourdes. When you go to Lourdes, you come back with water to heal people. Or some image just to heal you. So much that I study the color. And always the image at this time, they took the color that make you happy and give you new life. And you are frequently, like in Buddhist image, in a, no, no, a Indian image, you have the color of baby, pink and green. It's very strange because when you buy that, you take that for you, you put that in your home, you feel better. It has an effect on you. It's a drug. Image is a drug. It's not an intellectual representation to make you think. <laughs> Our definition of symbol is an object that makes you think to another thing. No. The definition of symbol here is an experience that changes your behavior. That's why music has so much importance. You know, the message is the effect 
produce on you by the medium. You know, for example, now I talk. Huh? Okay, I give a message, intellectual, I suppose, <laughs> huh? and you take notes. Yes. Okay, that's intellectual message, that's message here. But beside that, my conviction, my gesture, my eyes, the tune of my voice, the atmosphere of this place, your companion, all these things produce an effect on you. Maybe you don't like my voice. Well, so you are, uh, you know, but the effect produced on you means maybe after that you say, oh, oh my God, I have to shift my way of thinking. I have to shift my way of working in parish. That's the message. The message is the effect produced. Uh, you talk about Thésée. It, it, it's, it, it's something extraordinary. Roger Schutz, huh, the, the, the brother, Roger. Roger Schultz. Roger, the brother, Roger. Roger, huh? Roger. Roger. Roger, Roger, sorry. When he talk, <laughs> he, oh, it's very, uh, his son of son, Berla. When he talk, he has the mic in his mouth. Now I talk for your brain. You don't have mic here. But if I have a very good mic, and in Tese, they study a lot about mic and amplifier and outspeaker. When Roger uh, talks like that, his voice vibrates for each one. Even you don't know what he says. <laughs> Never mind, you become one with his voice. You become one with. That's the message. If you don't like his voice, <laughs> you get out. I know some people that they cannot suffer this. They don't like this ground. They don't like this voice. They don't like this song. They get out. Finish. But if you vibrate with, you know, if you modulate with, that's the essence of this language, you become one with. That's the effect produced on you. You know you have two. Huh? Message here is more formal, is more conceptual, is necessary. And uh, you know the catechesis of Middle Ages, it was really time to stop huh? because they become crazy. Huh? <laughs> they mix everything. Yes. You know, I was in a village, uh, very old way, huh? like in the Middle Ages. I assure you, huh? I, I work in this village. Once I was with a group of uh, men huh? and they were talking in a cafe. And they were talking about San Anthony, because I, the village was a chapel of San Anthony. They were talking about San Anthony, San Anthony, San Anthony. At the end, I was upset, and I said to them, oh, oh, oh stop to talk about San Anthony. Uh, Christian is Jesus. Talk about Jesus, not only about San Anthony. A man looks at me, and he said, Jesus. When Jesus could make so many miracles than St. Anthony, we believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, it's a story, real, real. It's absolutely true. I don't invent it. It happens to me. Wow. You know what is the message? <laughs> the message is miracle. Do you make miracle? Do you produce an effect? Yeah. Who you are is much more important than what you say. Here, what you say is much more important. Doctrine is much more important, theology, school, and so on. Here, who you are, the miracle that you do, that's what is important. An immersion in the symbol. So, uh, tomorrow will be in Bergamo, you know, uh, in darkness, I don't know, or never mind. 
uh, ah, that's very, that's important. That's the key of the symbolic way. Bon, first, don't talk. You are alone. Face yourself. Forget the theme that I have given to you. Never mind, that's not important. It's your background of your mind. Never mind. Okay, you go in Bergamo, I suppose, huh? and uh, you alone, because you need a time. You are not distraction. Huh? Bon, uh, the first time the the rule is this one: <coughs> don't think, feel. <coughs> don't think, feel. You will say to me, it's impossible. Yeah. But concentrate on feeling. And as much the thought come back, put away and come back to feeling. Feel your feet. Uh, Sometimes, because it's the most important, maybe listen to your, uh, by your ears. Close your eyes. Just hearing. And sometimes touching, and sometimes looking at. And uh, follow the inner instinct that push you in this place or in this place, in this way or in this way. If you are attracted by this uh, tree or by this uh, road, I don't know, go. Follow your feeling. Just that. That's new, you know. That's exactly the opposite of St. Ignace. And you try to imagine the gospel, the place, Jesus, and so on. But it's in your brain. You don't touch. You are not there. Okay, you imagine. You touch. But it's, it, it's not bad. But it's more than intellectual teaching. It's true. But it stay always in brain. Here, what is... Uh, special is I ask you, I propose that you are really a physical and sensorial experience if it's functioning correctly. After, for some of you, 20 minutes, for some half an hour more, depends. Uh, something push you strongly, some symbol moves you <coughs> more than the other. We will be in the same place, but each of us is different. Maybe you is a wind, maybe you is a, is a bird, maybe you is a cloud, I don't know. Maybe you is your belly because you feel bad, I don't <laughs> know. Let go, feel as you are, don't escape. Accept the life as it is. Enter in the sound, be one with. Bon, after a while, so something push you in a way, more than in another way. I would like to say, at this time, follow the symbol, the main symbol. Maybe at the beginning you touch many things. Huh? Could be a tree, could be a grass, could be the wind. Bon, let it go, walk, walk, walk. But Usually, sometimes. If you're, if you're not accustomed, it will take time eh, at the beginning. That's why I say for the young people it's the same. At the beginning, to start, it, it takes time. You are not used to that. But after a while, so you, you go, you follow your, your main emotion with the main <coughs> symbol. Maybe it's a big tree. At this time, you... you Take more time with this symbol. You touch this tree. You change place. You look. You feel, but also you let it uh, born from the depths of yourself some sentence, some emotion. Michael Corsica was one of Father Baban's first ministry experiences as a young oblate. It was there in Corsica that an awakening occurred that would impact his spiritual life and begin to entertain a dynamic vision for a new approach to catechesis. Corsica is one of the 26 regions of France. 
The island has a pleasant climate, beautiful mountains, and breathtaking coastlines. Corsica has not had the same level of intensive development as other parts of the Mediterranean, and is thus relatively unspoiled. It was here that he experienced what St. Bernard of Clairvaux wrote, You will learn more in the woods than in books. Forests and rocks will teach you secrets that nobody can ever reveal to you. As Pierre Beben catechized in different villages in Corsica, he began to realize a new pedagogy emerge of relationship and nature. He discovered a new inner awakening occurring in his spiritual life. He learned the meaning and significance for one to listen to your inner voice. I finished in Lyon in the university, so that was good. But the three years that I was in Corsica, in Vico, maybe three, four years, you know, was very, very low at the level of uh, theology. But I learned that what is more important. It, it was the base of my formation in the new orientation. And uh, if I have to put a, a kind of sentence on this period, I will uh, give the, the sentence of St. Bernard. You will learn more in the forest, in the woods, that in the book. Uh, forest, woods will teach you secret that no one can teach you. It, it, it was really my experience. And I remember the superior of this place, you know, sometimes he said to me, Pierre, stop to walk here, go ahead. So I was going along the, the rock and the mountain all day. That was very, very important. Rocks and woods and water and animals teach me a lot of things. And uh, I recombined many things from this place. So also, the environment, the ground of mountain, rocks, and uh, river, and animals, uh, give you a kind of uh, ground that helps you to, to awake your interiority. You know, because at this place, when you are a kind of solitude with a rock, with mountain, and so on, as I was young, you know, with uh, many good ideas and hope, you listen to your own voice. What I want to do. And the ground is more important for that. I, I tell you, me, I feel not that is, is today, uh, young people just go to university. And if university doesn't provide another way of learning, I'm afraid they become just conformed to this world. They don't listen to their inner voices because their inner voices are not awakened. If you go in a symbolic place, mountain, uh, night, uh, full moon, and so on, you know, uh, if you let it go like that, something grow from inner yourself and go to your mind. It's a process that starts from unconscious. And if you let it go, some unconscious way of thinking grow up and emerge. So, this orientation, this emergence, you know, from the unconscious was very important. So, the idea of symbolic way, if you shake in a right place the unconscious, something will happen. That's why it rejoined the sentence of St. Bernard, uh, forest will teach you more than books. Why? Because 
if you are in a symbolic place, in a symbolic environment, if you are some gesture that are symbolic at night and wonder, you know, passing from night to the day, I can say many things, you know, uh, something emerges and your unconscious is fundamentally religious. It's not only religious, everybody knows, Freud knows, but it's fundamentally religious. In the National Directory for Catechesis, we read, Catechesis is that particular form of the ministry of the Word which matures initial conversion to make it a living, explicit, and fruitful expression of faith. In one sense, this idea has been the driving force to which Father Baben has dedicated his life. He strives to define ways to awaken our interiority, our inner consciousness, to become more fully alive in Jesus. If you ask me today what could be the main uh, shift that we have to do in religious education, I would say something quite uh, terrible. The, the main shift is that we have to shift from church to us. Catechesis yesterday was an act, an act of the church huh? going to you and teaching you the right doctrine. What is most important is the steeple huh? <laughs> of church. Tech. Today, if you want to educate the young people with so many information, so many noise, so many news. If you don't awake their inner eye, their inner interiority, in a few years, all the things that you will who have seen, no, it will say nothing. Finish. Only a face based on the awakening of interiority can stand firmly today. In this culture, where so many information, so many uh, turbulence, emotions, nothing stands. The only thing that stands in you, it's something new. It's something that is within you. Even marriage doesn't stand so, huh? so many. If you are not rooted in yourself, if your inner eyes, I, I don't, who you are, not me, if, if you don't awake that, that's why symbolic way is so important. First of all, because it's a good way to help the people to listen to their inner voice. The teaching of church was first yesterday. And slowly it awakes you. In the best situation, it awakes you. OK. But today I would like to say, first of all, you have to make a the focus of your religious education, of your pedagogy, to awake the people to who they are. And you say that, who I am. And you have to awake not only psychologically, but spiritually. That means that each of us, we are a mystery. We don't know ourselves. Church teaching has to be grafted on this awakening. I would like to say the steeple of church has to be a reverberation of your inner steeple. It was very interesting what you said this morning because you talk so much about you. That's exact. It is the thing that you say this morning, it's about the time. Huh? 
uh, two or three of you, you, you insist a lot. And you say, my God, three hours, how, how can we survive? <laughs> when I, I say at the beginning, Abraham, leave your country, it means leave the way of you lose your time, <laughs> of you es escape to yourself by many business. Huh? <laughs> I like to go to shopping center because I lose myself. I forget myself. I touch by many stimulation. OK, OK, why not? I like. But sometimes you need really to go to desert. Huh? Do you want to express the gospel today? Asks Father Baben. Use symbolic language. For Baben, this was Jesus' language. It adds modulation to abstract words. But how does one begin to understand the methodology or the steps called the symbolic way? So if you ask me what are the main steps of a symbolic way, I would say first step, emerge in a symbolic place, be one with the nature that make emerge your archetype, Secondly, you share with a group. So you know the, the, the link. You don't stay with your archetype alone, but you share. And at this time, sharing together was very, very important. Huh? And after that, in uh, this group of sharing, you have a, an animator, what you want, you know. And if he's not agree, he can say, I'm not agree with that, oh, OK. But after that, you ask the group to celebrate what they leave. So we find a way of liturgy from the, the basic archetype. Basic archetype, community, sharing, and liturgical expression. That's symbolic way. Instead to have, you know, uh, first text, uh, explain this text, learn this text, memorize this text, and apply that in your life. It's total difference. That I call symbolic way. A theme is not only a symbol, like a tree. That's not a theme. The theme is when you make a link between you and the symbol and the reality. And the voice came to me, you know, strongly like a vision. Pierre, you, you have to change life. Now you have to be a strong tree. And people have to look at you and stand firm. Finish to be young and uh, nice and blah, 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 blah. Now, <laughs> ah! You know, so I make a link between the tree and my life. Uh, that's that's a kind of revelation. It's the tree reveals me. You know, and my poem and so on is that. So when you make the, the, the theme, you have to find in a group a kind of a, a link. And maybe your prayer, your psalm, I don't know, has to be linked with that. Bon, uh, if I go further, for me, bon, it's true that the gesture, I really embrace three times a tree, different trees, very strong, not small. <laughs> bon, but uh, I have to show how I suppose I have gesture to do. You know, uh, my gesture would be that I'm afraid to be like that because it means to me I have to accept to be old. I don't want. So, but the meantime, I'm fascinated by. I am between two. You know, the gesture is very simple. Yeah. And do you understand how all these things could be a base for liturgy? Pierre Baben's influence continues to reverberate around the world. CRECAVEX, the International Center for Research and Formation in Religious Communication, 
was born in 1971. It was a direct response to Vatican II to find new ways to communicate faith. Since its foundation, more than 1,300 participants from 120 countries have been trained at CREC and hundreds more in courses, workshops, and seminars all around the world. The symbolic way is really only a snapshot of who this man is. For those of us who have known and worked with Father Baben, there is the man of deep contemplation and prayer. The Eucharist and his prayer life have been the ground from which his religious imagination has been nourished and continues to flourish in his 80th year. So how does Father Baben, Oblate of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, now look upon the meaning and the direction of his life? Symbolic way is an exercise that we can do or not do, but it's always a new way of thinking. You know, the, the, the three points that I have given about symbolic way, that's a process. No need to go to mountain to do that. You know what is important and you're not important. And you are more than you talk. Slowly with the movement of age, you know more what is essential. You summarize your life in your mission. The term of vocation and mission become more important. Not what I have to do, but what I have to be. But it seems to me that the grace of God will push me to accomplish what was started. I, I don't manage everything like before. I never manage everything, but maybe less than before. I have to let some other hand take power on me.